we first started dancing with the what ifs on this film, um, it was a very natural process where it was just the four of us and then our writer Erica Rivanoia sitting in a small room in Sony throwing ideas onto the wall. Yeah. And, and the intimidating factor very quickly just became, it just kind of went away as sure. we just started playing and did what we all always and, done. You, you know, know you start with things of like, well, yeah. what would I want to see? What, you know, what right. ev evolution of character or environment? What if we went this way? What if we yeah, went that way? And, and then, you know, what is the story? What's the, you know, the emotional story that we can weave right. in that? We knew we wanted to change the genre of the film, so the first film being a disaster movie, felt that we'd, we've done that, told that story, we don't need to go back there again. So um, while we were making Cloudy One, we had a whole ending, which was a monster movie ending, with this zombie food attacking the citizens of Swallow Falls, and yeah, a giant Flint, food Flint monster. was battling a giant yeah. food head that was trying to protect the machine. And it was offering him meat girls, yeah. and like, we can rule the world. Yeah, and, it had a donut yeah. eyeball and bacon lips. <laughs> and and yeah. we, we, it was, the movie was two and a half hours long, and the exec executives said no, yeah. <laughs> no. So that was all on the floor, and so we were like, well, what if we did that? Like, we didn't yeah. have room for it in Cloudy One, but what if we started there? So the idea of a monster movie became really exciting to us and and uh, I think as far as like the Flint story um, we had sort of taking him emotionally to being like a 14 year old kid like he's kissed a girl he's got friends now he's he's sort of uh, established in his community we wanted to scatter that and give him an opportunity to not be the weirdo what happens to the guy who's like the only guy with a lab coat what happens when he ends up in a place where everybody's got a lab coat and he's actually has an opportunity to meet one of his heroes and, and, and to learn from a great inventor what happens to that guy and how does he keep his friends who he loves so much as he goes through that story. So it's kind of like Can't Buy Me Teen Wolf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we always think of 3D as like looking into the shoebox, like looking into the, the screen rather than right. things like coming out at you. And, you know, thinking of it as in like, you know, deep space, you know, yeah. it's a, uh, I think 3D works better when you're thinking of it like that. And, and I don't know how other films do it, but um, we bring uh, Vaughn, who's our, our 3D lead, yeah. he starts to look at shots right when they come out of layout. So very early on, compositionally, when we're starting to put some cement down in terms of where our camera is and what kind of choices we're making. Uh, we're getting feedback from that department, which yeah. and, you know, and it'll it, bring up issues like you know maybe this isn't working because of this. We'll right. Take a look at it and adjust from and there. And conversation leads to quality, so yeah. that's yeah. We crave improv because animation is such a such a glacial process. Like yeah. You're always looking for the happy accidents mm -hmm. and. And you want to try to make it look and feel quick and off the cuff. Yeah. Um, and as long as it's uh, you know enhancing the scene or as part of the story, yeah. you know improv is great. You know, and maybe you know there's a better take on a line or yeah. a better line. You know, and, that, and it's not just Bill. It's like all of our all of our our actors have been amazing at sort of picking up the ball and running with their characters. Yeah. Uh, James Caan singing with the pickles and and, <laughs> and uh, you know just James Caan sings with pickles. He yeah. sings with pickles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a shanty. Wrote a pickle shanty <laughs> and uh, played some harmonica on it and brought it in. And at first he started doing it in an Irish accent because he was like, well, you know, Tim Lockwood, you know, he might be Irish. And, and it was like, okay, but now it no longer sounds like Tim. <laughs> yeah. And it actually took him a while and he had to, like, go back to just speaking like Tim. It's like something broke in the brain. Uh, yeah, so it was like got stuck in a groove. But, uh, you know, he sings this uh, pickle shanty along with these pickles and it's really funny. Terry Crews has stepped into the role of Earl. Uh, Mr. T, for whatever reason, did not return, and uh, Terry Crews is doing a great job as Earl. Oh, he's fantastic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did you guys feel with the loss of Mr. T? Well, Whoa. being fans of Mr. T, it was, yeah. uh, you know, a little bit sad that, you know, he wasn't returning, but Terry Crews has... When, when he stepped it, into the role, it was like, wow, first time yeah. in a room with him, it's like, you can yeah. actually make your chest hair wiggle. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I can't do it. I have to yeah. jump up and down. Right, like, he's gonna, yeah. He kind yeah. of is sort of the new modern day. Yeah, and, and he's a giant cartoon character. I mean, yeah. like he's like, and I say this because he's not around. Like, yeah. oh, there he is. No, no, <laughs> wrong. Yeah, um, but I mean, like he is. He is so animated and so uh, gregarious and just like out there. And he's like such a big personality. It's yeah. so fun just to be with him in the room. And also, he, he great yeah. sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also so funny. He, he naturally slipped into Earl. We. We told him, you know, please don't do an impersonation of Mr. T, but just try to be Earl. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was amazing how close he actually is to sounding like Mr. T. And so. when you look at, like, some of his roles, like, he, you can tell that he's a father and he's got, like, he's got, what, five children? Uh, I think so. Yeah, so, like, he brings, 
he brings a lot of what Earl has to the table just naturally, and he's got a lot of instinct towards Very that. Very loving yeah. father. Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of stories that we could tell after this film, in yeah. many different directions the, the next you one could like go in. You know, I, I really think the, the great thing about Cloudy is that because what Chris and Phil sort of presented with the first film was a very genre-driven uh, platform, if you switch that genre, you could probably keep telling these stories because the characters are so relatable and gettable yeah. in terms of their 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 Muppety joy. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just funny things, you yeah. know? I mean, like, they're such funny characters that I think you could put them into a spy movie and probably yeah. have just as much fun. Right. 